and welcome back to Much Do About Rugby, the podcast where we chat about everything rugby. If you like the content, then please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It really helps us out. Without further ado, let's jump into our Six Nations round four review. We're going to start off with our player of the round, Maliki. Who's yours? You guys are going to absolutely hate me for this, but Johnny Sexton, he was incredible. He got that winning penalty, which was literally from the touchline. Um, and, you know, he just had an all-round great game. I think he, yeah, by getting that penalty was really influential. And I think he, even though he wasn't captaining Ireland, he definitely led from the front. And I think, yeah, without him, Ireland may not have got the win. But for sure, he is my player of the round. Did he lead from the front, though? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he was. I don't think he was a standout player, really, for, for Ireland. To be honest, I thought he I was. could. Uh, there were a lot of players I thought were better than him. But well, yeah, obviously, Irish... like Ty Byrne was Im- immense as always. Yeah. I thought Keenan, although he wasn't as on like his usual form, where he's like darting through the defense, he was very good in the air. But yeah, Sexton, he won it. He won it for them. Yeah, I do. I do think he out, he did outplay Russell, to be honest, which is interesting. Having had the conversation with Mark the other week about how Sexton should start for the Lions and captain the Lions, <laughs> I think that's interesting. I do think he outplayed Russell. Um, what do you think, Ed? I think that's complete BS. I think there's only one person on the Ireland team that really deserves a, a, a mention properly, or two people actually. CJ Stander carried like an absolute tank. Um, always, he's always up for a carry, and it's just good to see. And I think I can see him possibly starting the Lions. Everything just relates to the Lions now, doesn't it? It's crazy. Yes. Um, and then one person who just uh, has seriously impressed me for the last however many rounds um, since November, basically, is Robbie Henshaw. He's actually yeah. playing some outstanding yeah. rugby. Smacked v- Duhan van der van der. Average and a skanker, and yeah, not really though, is he? Oh, <laughs> average, mate. Um, no, to comment on Scotland though, I thought Scotland did play well. Their line out really malfunctioned though, which really cost them the game, I think. Um, and if you can't get your set piece working, you don't really stand a chance. But I think it does show like how good they were to still be within three points and to limit Ireland to, to just 23. So that that's a positive for Scotland. Um, I thought Scotland could have definitely gone on to. To win it though, possibly like I was, I, I was never ever in doubt that Ireland were going to win that. Literally from the from the from the minute the first whistle got blown, it was over. Well, that seems like that shut up. Yeah. That is chat. Yeah. I mean, I think it just shows like Scotland have some seriously standout players. Like, um, I thought Hogg had a pretty good game. He filled in at ten when uh, Russell went off for an HIA, I think, and also Hamish Watson. What a finish! Like, yeah. how's he scoring that try? Realistically. He's- absolute nutter i don't think there's i don't think there's someone in in world rugby i'd be more scared to 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 like have run into me like there's other other big players but like the way he runs into a tackle he's all like shoulders he just like moves looks like he like tries like kind of Mm. as if punch you but with his body yeah it's kind of scary man it's kind of scary (laughs) punch you with Um, his body i don't understand about him he's got he's got like quite skinny his legs look quite skinny like Hamish Watson, and then so when you stood next to him, you realize how small you are. Oh, no, but I mean, compared to other players, and then he's just, yeah, literally p- punches you with his body. <laughs> <laughs> so true. No, seriously, scary player. Um, who are your guys' players around then? Yeah, Maxon, who's who's your player of the round? We've already touched on the um, Scotland players. Is it yeah. anyone, anyone different? Or yeah, mine's someone from the from the England France game. I think we all saw the how well England played. Um, I think Anthony Watson for me um, had a had a storming game. Um, scored uh, one of England's tries. Um, made made decent yards. And I thought this, the player of this round has to come from that England team. Um, to be fair, I don't think there was any like ridiculously standout players in England forwards. I think it was an all round good performance. I think I think Tom Curry was actually had one of the best games he's had in a while. To be yeah, honest, one hundred percent. And I think really he's been I think up. he's been a bit under the radar the last few games, like doing. But that this game he really stepped up, especially with his ball carrying. He was just a bit of a beast. Yeah, he's a weapon. He is a weapon. I think he's definitely developing that. Yeah, the Ed. Who else were you going to say? Because there's only one of the player. There's the other player I was going to mention for the England team was obviously Mara Toje. Yeah. Came back massively. From all the criticism he was under last week, giving away too many penalties, scored the match-winning try. 
Um, great moment of, of thought from him to score that try and well deserves some praise as well. I don't know, Ed, was that going to be your player of the round? Uh, yeah, but I, I, I don't really want to name one one player. I don't think there was one player from like England that really, really stood out to me. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Watson, I did, did think was a good choice for man of the match just simply because like dazzling footwork, uh, making that amazing break and, and scoring the try, obviously. But I thought he quietened down the second half. So I think um, Tad Byrne from Ireland, big, big shout there. I thought Jamie Ritchie had a good game. Um, but I think, I I don't know if this this is a bit of a rogue choice for player around, but uh, someone that did really impress me and did step up to the plate for England was Owen Farrell. Mm. Especially after the pressure he's been under, like, there's been so many calls for him, like getting Marcus Smith in the team or jo- or Joe Simmons or so- someone else, basically, and for him mm. like calling to change up the captaincy and stuff. Like, I think for him to have he a performance like that, front, to be fair, he he did, and he and like people say, pe- I, people were going like on Facebook feeds and stuff, going like, oh, I haven't seen Farrell all game. I thought I thought he was everywhere, to be honest. I thought he was carrying quite well. He kicked all his kicks. Like what more can you want? And he led, and he led from the front, made some nice, nice big hits. I felt he was um, more involved than usual. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, what big, massive credit to him. You know, I, I, I hope I haven't asked for him to be out the England squad or anything, but uh, <laughs> in in previous episodes. But uh, no, I think he's he's definitely. I, Ed, I think I agree with you. To be fair, one thing about Farrell, I saw seen a lot more of in the last, especially last game, is actually his carrying ability on a crash ball. Do you guys notice that at all? He actually like crashed as a ball, which I ha- did not see him do much. Obviously, when he plays ten, but I think especially in defence, we saw that saw that sort of like psycho side to him that we we saw. Obviously, the famous yeah. picture of him facing the All Blacks hacker, and I felt like it was that Farrell back again. I think he made that <laughs> one massive hit that won the ball back for England. The ball yeah. went absolutely flying. I was like, yeah, he, he he's back. That is the psycho Farrell in defence that we all know. Um, no, he's good. He's good. Well, what did you guys make of the Atoje try? No try. Um, try. Maliki. Try. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm on. I'm, I'm like on the fence on this because I think. I mean, if I remember correctly, the question that was asked was, um, it was like on field decision was no try, and then it was any reason to award the try, and I think it's like so marginal. Um, I, don't, I thought I, I well I didn't see a grounding personally. Yeah, I thought it was a super brave decision from the TMO to actually say to overturn the decision. I think if I was a French fan, I would be really really annoyed about that decision. To be honest, if it's yeah, the they're up in arms. I think, I think they are up in arms. Yeah, like, I think England's been pretty lucky with that decision, but. But the way that I see it is that England had the momentum. We were on the front foot. We we. We hadn't been on top all game. France scored some really nice tries, obviously, but they were kind of one-offs. France didn't properly threaten England in the 22 other than other than the tries they scored. So looking at it that way, I mean, you know, maybe England would have scored a couple of phases later anyway. I'm not sure if we had a penalty coming or if we would have got, the, you know, had the scrum. The scrum was on top as well. So not sure what would have meant we scored for sure but I think we most likely would have anyway so it would have been a victory either way Um, I think some other notable mentions from the weekend Louis Rissama again it's quite annoying he keeps cropping up really Uh, (laughs) Max and what he said about about the way He's just so quick. I don't understand how he does it. Like, have you guys ever seen Twilight where like the vampires run and it looks like they're like floating as they go along? That's actually how I see it. Like, when, Louis, when um Liam Williams pinged the ball out to him and he just sprinted down the line, that's literally what I was saying. I think I saw a TikTok the other day with Taylor Lautner running on these like wheels. <laughs> I was like, that actually is like how Louis Stamit runs. Yeah, Yeah. and when he took the interception, it's crazy because Padovani, the uh, covering Italian winger, who's not a slouch, let's face it, he plays on the wing in international rugby. He's not going to be slow. He literally gave up like on the halfway line because Louis Stamit was already 20 metres past him. (laughs) Crazy, like just horrendously fast. Um, Nice play from Sheedy. uh, Score a try again, him showing that he's a good player off the bench. And... Good for my fantasy team as well. So always, <laughs> always a positive. This is the first week that uh, both Maliki and I have beaten Maxin in points. So pretty, I'm pretty, still top though. Pretty pleased about that. 
Um, any other moments of the round that you guys found particularly of note? Yeah, I have one. I think um, France's set piece try off the line out where they went long on the line out. I think some people are branding that the try of the round so far. Uh, but that was an, I thought that was an excellent try. One last moment I'd like to mention is uh, the fantastic footwork from the most unlikely player on the pitch in the Ireland Scotland match. Uh, tagged Furlong with the uh, <laughs> insane footwork. He literally uh, stepped some Double step. second row and then stepped Finn Russell as well and then managed to get the offload away, which is uh, something you probably more expect from a winger. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I guess that was a highlight for me. It was quite, quite funny to see that. Um, but, yeah, Ireland, England and Wales with the victories then. That is all we have time for today, and we will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Rugby.